I'm Alex Ingram, a young DJ and events manager from London. Whilst in Kasimu, Kenya's third largest city on the edge of Lake Victoria, I met another young DJ and events manager named Jack. Straight away we hit it off and really got on well, as we had so much in common, yet we were from such different worlds. I was truly amazed and inspired by Jack's story and the struggles through his life. I felt Jack's journey in building his own business is the perfect example of how a small amount of money, a repayable business loan, can help young people. Indeed, anyone from both poverty and need. This is Jack's story. Yeah, my name is Jack Omoni. Yeah, I'm just from, from Sakwa. From Sakwa? Yeah. Okay. And before the orphanage? Yeah, before the orphanage. What's, yeah. your, what's your story? How did you come to be? Yeah, before the orphanage, well, I was in the street. With some of my friends, sniffing glue, smoking. Using some kind, different kinds of, of, of drugs. And uh, that's where we stayed. For almost, I stayed there around eight years with my friends in the street. And then I, and then another, another mom came from somewhere. He's an Indian. Then she met me nicely. She welcomed me nicely. She gave me some clothes, some food. And I was, I was okay. Then that's where he took me to the and at that orphanage. When that orphanage closed down, then my part came and picked me up. And I'm calling. What were some of the challenges when you were living on the street? What was it like? What were yeah. the difficult things? Yeah, in the street, when you live in the street, you have to struggle for things to get. Yeah? Like maybe food, shelter. You won't get them easily. You sleep by the road, you eat. Or maybe you carry for someone something, then someone pays you, and then you have to you have to struggle for it to get the money to eat, something like that. Then to sleep, you have to get ourselves in a paper bag or something that can cover us in the I mean like on the road, we have beside the road or maybe a supermarket somewhere down. Then you sleep there. That's how it is. It's great. And how do the police react to you when you're a street boy? Mm, yeah, it's really, it's really tough sometimes. Like they have a season that police comes in. They have like uh, on, on August, early August, they usually fight with the street boys so much because they, are, they don't like them on the August, August season. They fight with them so much and they took them to a, they put them in a juvenile home. It's like a small cell of, of street boys, but it's called, it's called juvenile home. That's where the, the boys, they stick them there, up to the street. But they fight, they throw stones to the police when police come in, or the city councils, maybe sometimes. Yeah. And so how old were you when you were on the street? From which ages? Yeah, I went to the street when my mom passed away. That's when I was, in, I was 10 years old at that time. That's the time I, I went to the street. And I started start struggling a lot, and a lot, and a lot, because you know? my mom wasn't around, and my dad also, because he passed off at the time. I started struggling a lot. And how old were you at the first orphanage? The first orphanage? Yeah. Yeah, the first orphanage was uh, 13 years old. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And now? Yeah, now I'm grown up, I'm 19. 19? Yeah. Cool. And so you have a business? Yeah, I have a business and I'm happy with that. Cool. Can you tell us what, what is your business and a little about your business? Yeah, my business is doing sound. It's like uh, I'm having a sound. Like uh, these are the speakers. Around there are four bases. And they have, we have two mids, but two dual. There are two, one in dual, like two speakers inside. This one is 15 inch. And people do hire me. But sometimes public address, sometimes wedding, sometimes even those churches they hire me for crusade, or maybe someone's funeral and they want public address, something like that. They hire me a lot and party, also some party. You know, they hire sound from me sometimes. Yeah. And do you ever put on your own events, or do you always do sound for other people? Yeah, I I, I usually do my own events at the holiday when people close school, like holiday like uh, 
It will be April, people are in holiday, and August, and actually in December also, because in December people are, are full like this in town and they want to hear booming sound. So the, I do my own business, like I go in somewhere and rent it for a night, and I put the sound there, and I put charges like 100 bob in the gate. You pay 100 bob, you get in, pay 100 bob, you get in, something like that. So what is the event like? You have music? Yeah. And is there some other things as well? Yeah, I just have music. That's what I have actually right now. And um, what kind of music is at your events? Yeah, all music. I play all music. I play R&B, blues, hip hop, local, banger. Uh, they are all. I play all. Play all kind of music. Excellent. And how did you get into doing sound? Yeah. First of all, I was interesting. Less than two or four, you know, in 2002, I was really interested in the, in the being a DJ, yeah. So I was really I wanted to get in that in the DJ and uh, doing that. It was it was like my talent, yeah. So then when I got someone sponsor me for a course in Nairobi called the Homeboys Academy, and I went there and I learned much about the DJ and about the engineer sound engineering. They taught me a lot, so. It was really cool because I like I just like it. It's really cool. I like it. Yeah. And how did you get the money to buy your first equipment? Yeah, it's really hard by the way because if you start start by a bit, it's good. Start with two speakers, slowly by slowly, but two speakers. They were not here by the air production, or they are they are out right now. They were here. Then I got someone to sponsor me for. Four bases, which we are here. And I got someone from Kampala sponsor me for these two. You see here, there are two mix like this. Someone sponsor me for that. And I got someone called Positive Noise behind me here, which is down here. It's one hump, 1,500 watts, with a crossover, DBX, 12 channels. And, then, and I have the other one, it's not out also, one hump. So I get it sponsored by small, a little bit, a little bit. Like four people sponsor me for all of this out. Yeah. Excellent. And what do you do with the profit that you make? Yeah. Um, the thing is, uh, I'm keeping some money for myself and for, because I, I pay accommodation for myself also on some food. And also, I want to bring up big sound. I'm planning to do that because I'm having some little money and I, make, I want to put some more, save some more that I can. On a, open a big company of music in Kisumu here. Because in Nairobi there, there's a homeboys which is running there. So in Kisumu here, I want to try my best and run the biggest sound in Kisumu. Okay. So here, this one is the positive noise I was telling, telling you about. For 1,500 watts. And I have some kind of light. Let me show you here. Right here. Here they are. I have some 12 lights inside here. Halogen bulbs. Yeah, although some sounds are not here, like four speakers are not around here. And this is the green box where I put my, my cables, my microphone cables. I put here. You come here in, in, in Kenya, here, all these covenant here. Then you show us, and then we will be, we will learn more from you, you no, know, and we will be happy about it. So not even you come for sponsors, but you come also to show us the skills that you have in the, in the business, this kind of business. So you guys are welcome if you can come. So I just wanna tell you guys, thank you so much. You are welcome when you come. And uh, I'm Jaco Mondi. I'm running the. It's called Sound Boys International Sound. I call it international, but it's not that international. Yeah, but I, I hope one day it will be international. Yeah, and we have so much welcome in here. Thanks, man.